Hey everyone, this is Rob from Moonworks, back again. It's been a while since I've made a video, so it feels a little weird being here, but I'll try to get back in saddle as quickly as possible. I'm gonna go over the Dragon Crypt. This is my new scene, showing here it's two levels. There is a third level, but it's only used to store some tokens, which I've attached to walls and tiles to, so we don't really need to use the empty level, just the lower and the entrance level. Okay, so the idea for this scene is mainly a bit of a puzzle scene where you can see up here in room G, there is an image which is a bit scrambled right now. So the idea of the scene is to figure out how to align the image here of the dragon properly. And then once it is aligned properly, it'll also align these rotating rooms here at the bottom to allow entrance into the dragon crypt at the top. So I'm gonna go over how this is all done. So if we go up to the top floor, the entrance level, we have our entrance down here at the bottom. We enter a main room in the middle of the room there is a bit of an altar with an interaction point on it. Okay, so here we are with a token. What you wanna do with this altar is to place the crimson orb in it. When you place the crimson orb in it, something will happen. And I'll get to that when we get to that before it, when the first token enters so that if he tries double clicking on it, a little scrolling text shows nothing happens. So whatever they're trying to double click on it for, just shows nothing happens. Hopefully that doesn't give the players a clue as to what will happen. So if we go up to the top room here, players can explore the scrambled image and also GMs here can just double right click, or sorry, double click on the statues and by double clicking can have them disappear. Main idea here is imagine maybe animated statues um, come to attack any PCs that might enter this room. That's the whole purpose of the room is to show the image and show how it would be properly lined to end up showing the secret passage. That's the main room. If we turn to the left here quickly, there is another room to the left. This room here has a pool. Um, this is a bit of a crypt, so I'd imagine this pool is where bodies were washed and cleaned before burial. And at the top up here, there is a sliding door, but the PCs will only see it um, since it's a secret door. We'll only see it as a wall. They can probably tell it's a door. So it's programmed to open at the right time, but if you do want to open it for whatever other reason, you can just hit this button. It slides away. So obviously the PCs, when they first enter the dungeon, they can't go left because that door would block in their way. There's nothing really up in the top room, any f further place for them to go. This altar doesn't interact with them. So their only way left to go is to the right. Immediately you can see uh, there is a stairway down in the middle of the chamber, but it is guarded by a grate. You can see that an interaction point, but it's actually hidden, so players won't be able to see it. But just in case, it is also deactivated, so you can see I'm trying to click it. It's not letting me use the stair interaction point. Now we can open it using the room options in the right-hand margin. So we have an open grate button and a closed grate button. When we open it up, you can see the interaction point becomes a bit more visible. And now we can use the, the interaction point if we need. Now the idea behind the grate is that the piece is going to figure out a way to get by it. So to that end, I do have some interaction points on the right hand margin just to add a statue, either broken, intact, or none. Maybe it comes alive and they have to defeat it before the grate opens. Uh, maybe it tells them a clue and they have to respond and provide the right answer to the riddle before the grate opens. Regardless, once the grate opens, PCs can use the interaction point to go down the stairs. Okay. They're going to come into here. Two things of note. Obviously, we have this down at the bottom. I call these the magic pads. So when you actually step on them, they will glow and activate something. And what it activates is the rotation of these rotating rooms. In order to correctly um, get through <laughs> this dungeon, the pieces will have to use this pad in room A B1, sorry, and in room A1 to rotate both of these rotators, which also rotate the central, central rotator as well. And when they're aligned properly, that is when the image on the entrance level is um, complete, it'll allow passage into the hallway up into room C. So how does that work? Well, to use it, a PC can just step on the magic pad. So when they step on the pad in B1, it's only going to rotate the rotator 45 degrees. So now we can see both the right rotator and the center rotator have both moved 45 degrees. And if you have PCs, they're probably looking here like, hey, we still can't go anywhere. So they got to rotate it one more time. 
Now this mini rotator is in the right spot. Tokens can now move freely through into the next room. So this rotator here, I've done it in this manner in order to teach the PCs that they can rotate this central rotator. And then that will come in handy when they're using the next one as well. They already know what they do. Just kind of trying to teach the PCs as they're going through the dungeon. Next, we come into a room with a glowing orb. We have an overhead dragon here, which will spew fire if the orb is taken. So I'll demonstrate that. If we come up, we have a red orb in this kind of altar-like area. Using the interaction points will allow PCs to take the orb and put it back. And if they do decide to take the orb, it'll add the item to the player who took it and also ask the GM if they want to trigger the trap or not. So as you can see, we're in our testers inventory right now. They don't have any items on them. However, if they step close and double click on the interaction point, the dialogue pops up and it says an orb glows crimson in the altar. Remove it. If you click yes, now we have a dialogue that would show to the DM only. Someone has taken the crimson orb in room B2. Activate the flame trap. On a yes, the image will show and sound will play. Damage is not automated, so set up much like my other traps that I've done. So on a yes, we'll show the fire. You can see lights activate, tiles change overhead, and you can make saving throws and do damage to your players as you like. You'll also note the image here against the wall has changed back to an empty altar and the red light from the orb is no longer glowing. If we go into our character sheet, a crimson orb has been added to that character. Now, if we double click the interaction point again, they'll ask him to replace the orb. So you can click yes and the orb will be back in place and now the trap will be reset. So if you want to remove it again, the trap dialog pops up again. I'm not going to show it to you, but it'll work just as before. Now, if you had a token that didn't have the crimson orb, and they try to replace it, it'll just say nothing happens. So our PCs can then exit back out here with this crimson orb, and they might think to themselves, hey, there was that altar in the very first room, maybe we need to put the crimson orb into there. And that is the right thing to do. But before I take you up there, I just also want to demonstrate um, that by stepping on this pad, we also rotate not only the right rotator and the center rotator, but also the scrambled image on the first floor. So I'm gonna try to race myself to <laughs> step on the pad and run up to the second floor. So let's just get ready here. So we step on the pad, we'll go to the edge of the floor. And you can see the middle one there moves. So that was because someone triggered that magic pad. Now, why is that important? Again, you can see it's still not aligned properly, but hopefully your PCs will notice that something has changed here, that something has rotated. Now, when your PCs come back up, this guy now has the Crimson Orb on his character sheet. When PCs come back upstairs, they can come back into this room. And so now that he's got a Crimson Orb and he tries double clicking on this interaction point in the altar, he asks, do you want to place the Crimson Orb in there? If you say yes, you can see the Crimson Orb image is now showing, is now showing on the altar. And additionally, this door on the left has opened, allowing passage down into the rooms A1 and A2. And also, if you were paying close attention, you can see the outside of this ring has now changed. And now the fire is aligned, so we know we have the outer one aligned properly. That should make it easier to align the other two to it. Let's try capturing this all in one shot. So now if we ever take any double clicks on here, it's, you can take the orb back. And this outer ring misaligns. So in order to have this done properly, you, know, you need to be able to get downstairs. So you need to have the orb aligned here. Next door to go down to the left side and correctly aligns the image of the dragon in the top of the scene. So obviously the next thing to do here is go through room D down to the left side. Now, I also thought this cool while well, Metamine had natural use in the crypt to wash bodies before burial. It could also hold something like a water weird or a water elemental. Now our players can go descend and access the next interaction point to go down the stairs here. So we can go down to the lower level and our characters enter another room. They can again see the edge of a rotator here on the right of the room and another magical pad. So if we then step over, they can step on the pad. Both the outer, sorry, both the left and the center rotators by 90 degrees, and now the players can come through this way properly. Now, smart players are going to think, well, what happens if I rotate it again? And now 
in this configuration, they can get to this kind of little island between the two rotators. And in this exact configuration, they could actually come here and hit a dead end. But PCs may want to leave a, pl a player here in the middle while somebody else uses the magic pad to keep on rotating it. And they could theoretically, if they use teamwork, get some players through without solving the puzzle correctly, but it would lock some people out. There is no way to rotate these rotators up in the top room, so they are actually locked out. They will not be able to get through themselves unless the puzzle is solved correctly. So just keep that in mind. I wouldn't discourage that, but I would make there be consequences to it. So if your players do manage to kind of sneak through without solving the puzzle, maybe there is a big encounter in the last room which needs the whole party there. So they want to retreat and figure out how to complete the puzzle correctly. I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to go back up to the main level and show you the middle portion of the upper dial image changing when someone steps on this magic pad. Now we can see this has moved nine degrees. Still not aligned. And I'm just going to do it again until it is aligned. So, P so this is tokens can come through here and in this room there's two options you can either have the, the ruined sarcophaguses you click the cycle button in the left margin just to empty it out if you want to put in something else in this room but the design I went for here is just the sarcophagus is a showing and then if they use the interaction points they just turn the, the lid on and off essentially they can move the lids into the coffins So depending on how you want to use the crypt, these could be ancient dragon knights, these could be people who fought against dragons, these could be worshippers of an ancient dragon cult, or current dragon cult, depending how you want to use it. I've also put the same image of the dragon in the middle of this um, floor symbol, just to keep the theme going. I'll use the trigger magic landing buttons, just easier than moving the token on and off of the magic landing. So if I hit the one on the left margin here, beside room A, you can see this starts to blow here as well as a rotated inner dial on the main floor or the entrance level. So now we can see this is properly aligned. Players are now can freely travel from room A1 into the middle rotator. So the last thing to do is to rotate this into the appropriate alignment so they can get into room C. To do that, they'd have to go back and use the rotator or the magic pad in room B1, so I'll just use that until it's aligned properly. So we have to rotate one more time. So now you can see it's aligned properly for somebody who was in this room. They can now travel through it and get into the final room. Now how is this a puzzle? Well if you go back up to the entrance level, you can see now that it is aligned properly in the basement for the passageway the dragon symbol is also properly aligned, so I would expect PCs to be running back and forth to understand how this dial is aligned and make sure it's in the right location. So once they see that this is aligned correctly, figure out how much each magic pad is moving each ring of the dial, they should be able to align, align the dragon image and allow themselves passage through the dungeon to this final room, room C. Now I've added individual rotators, rotator buttons for each of the sections of the of the dungeon in case you want to do it a different way. Do you ever touch any of these rotation buttons or the manual rotation buttons for the image dial? So these would just rotate three images and these rotator buttons would rotate the inner dials. If you ever do that, that could upset the synchronization between the dials and the image upstairs. So I would always, if I was going to use the puzzle as I've designed it, hit the reset button. This will put it back into its starting coordinates, which all align with each other. So if the magic pads or the magic landing buttons are used, it should work correctly. So let's keep that, mind, uh, keep that in mind. Use the reset button before sending players through if you want to use the puzzle as I've designed it. So then you come into the last room here, which I call this the dragon crypt, and I would say this is actually the crypt of a dragon. So we have some bones of the dragon. I don't think the whole dragon would have been buried here. Maybe some of its bones have just been brought down by a cult, brought it here to worship, or maybe was brought here by the cult um, in order to resurrect it at some point. 
And if it was a good cult or a good dragon knights who are hunting evil dragons, maybe they brought the bones here so they could speak with dead with the bones in order to find out where more dragons were in order to hunt down those evil dragons. So a bunch of ways this could be used. Um, I'll just note here, let me put on sight again. There are walls, um, a bit of overhead tiles, just so you walk under the horns. And then you, if you want to put something else in this room, you don't like the idea of dragon bones, you can have an empty room instead and just removes all the terrain walls and images. So that's essentially how the scene works. I hope you like it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I hope I went over everything in enough detail. Okay, I hope you guys like that. That's it for the scene.